Well, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX is just the most adorable thing, isn't it? We played the demo with our daughter and it is absolutely right up her alley. Everything from the cutesy watercolour art style to the fact that she gets to play as a Pikachu and choose her own partner is just perfect for her. The original Mystery Dungeon Game Boy Advance and DS games are something of a cult classic, so it makes sense that they've received such a loving remake on the Switch. That said, because of hardware differences, not all the features from the original games can be brought across which might actually be for the best. After all, the original release of Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team featured a pretty appalling glitch that ruined players' lives. Perhaps that's a little dramatic, but still, let's dig in. The Nintendo DS is a bit of an odd system in a lot of ways. Not only does the handheld feature two screens, but also two cartridge slots, allowing a player to have a DS and a Game Boy Advance cartridge inside the machine at the same time. In the early days of the DS's lifespan, when the GBA was still fresh, many games, particularly Pokemon games, made use of these two slots to allow DS games to pull information from GBA cartridges. So, if you, for example, owned the generic racing game Pokemon Dash, and you inserted your Game Boy Advance Pokemon game cartridge, such as Pokemon Fire Red or Pokemon Sapphire, you could run around a racecourse that was generated from the sprite art of one of your Pokemon from the GBA game. This was not exactly thrilling, as not much effort was put into turning this artwork into a sensible racetrack, but still, it was a cute idea. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team are very similar games, paralleling the differences between titles like Red and Blue or Ruby and Sapphire. Certain Pokemon are only available in one or the other of the games, but the experience is mostly the same. As Blue Rescue Team launched on the DS and Red Rescue Team debuted on the still popular at the time Game Boy Advance, it's possible to put both cartridges into a DS at the same time. The developers thought it'd be fun if these two games could interact with each other, so when both cartridges are in the DS at once, the Blue Rescue Team can go on a special mission to save the Red Rescue Team from disaster. It's a nice little touch, and one that won't be appearing in Rescue Team DX in the same form for the obvious reason that the Switch can only contain one cartridge at a time. Either way, this very sweet little bonus feature actually caused the Pokemon Company a lot of headaches when the games were first released in Japan. Alas, there was a glitch in the game's design. If Blue Rescue Team was inside the DS alongside a GBA game, the device would check to see whether the Game Boy game in question was Red Rescue Team. If it wasn't, the DS would erase all save data on the Game Boy cartridge. Oops. When this bug was discovered, Nintendo went immediately into damage control. This was a big problem. All of the players of Blue Rescue Team were going to discover, over time, that the game was poison to their Game Boy game collection. So a mass recall was ordered. Customers were encouraged to send their cartridges to Nintendo in order to receive a brand new patched version of the game that wouldn't delete all of their save data. The international version of the game was, of course, edited to fix this bug before launch, meaning that unless your copy of Blue Rescue Team is a first print run Japanese cartridge, you're entirely safe. Weirdly, this wasn't even the only Pokemon recall Nintendo had to deal with at the time. While far less severe, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire featured a bug which stopped berry plants from growing after a certain time. This bug actually is present in worldwide versions of the game, so at great cost to the company, Nintendo issued a recall of cartridges. To sweeten the deal, anyone who sent their game off to be fixed also received a free shiny Zigzagoon within their save file as a reward. In the modern era, it's very easy for a company to fix even a minor detail in the game without too much effort. Last year, Nintendo went to the trouble of patching out a, shall we say, problematic voice artist from Fire Emblem Three Houses simply through the internet. It's nice to remember just how weird and wonderful the inner workings of video games can be sometimes, and how far Nintendo is willing to go to make sure players have the best experience possible. Unless your Joy-Con starts drifting, that is.